Xbox goes to Germany, announces a few titles, and angers a few fans. This week, Xbox has uh, traveled on over to Germany to do the Gamescom. Gamecom is happening this week, and Xbox, for everything it has announced, should be riding a serious wave of momentum. The company has announced a smattering of games all landing before the holiday shopping season comes to an end. And yet here we are talking about how fans are once again feeling like second class citizens for their own platform. So let's sort of dive into what was announced this week. And this is not a doomer video, but it's a real, I think Xbox fans have to reset their expectations going forward. And I think Xbox made that exceptionally clear this week. So these are the titles that were announced this week. A, a handful of top tier titles. These are not like, games you've never heard of. I mean, you've got a Call of Duty, you've got a Diablo release, you've got a Fable uh, and a Vow. I guess technically those aren't all coming before the end of the year, but you've got an Indiana Jones, you've got Aura, Tower Board. Like these are all big budget titles that people should be genuinely excited about. And Xbox, for everything that it has done wrong over the past decade, has a huge lineup ahead of it. It should be a great holiday shopping season for Xbox. And if you're sitting here saying, I have nothing to play on Xbox Game Pass, you are not trying because there is a ton of stuff coming to market and it's all landing very, very soon on a nice cadence where you cannot be bored when it comes to Xbox. However, things started to go off the rails because of some of the uh, Xbox fans, while we have a lot to be excited about, are starting to feel slighted. And we're starting to feel like second-class citizens. And let's kind of break down what is going on here. So first up, so Towerborn, a title that has been time and time again shown on Xbox. It looks fantastic, if I could queue up the right video. It looks like a super fun title, a unique IP coming to market. And... It, for all intents and purposes, we figured it would launch first on Xbox. However, that's not the case. If you look here, it's actually launching on Steam first. So if you're an Xbox faithful and you supported the company through buying all these studios, all of a sudden the title that you maybe have wanted to play, one of the, you know, a new IP coming to the platform, you gotta be a PC gamer if you wanna play it first. It's not coming to Xbox first. Maybe you could make the argument, and some I'm sure will be like, look, it's a new IP bringing all this stuff to market. It's easier to build PC games than it is to build console games, and that's why they're going there first. It'll show up not long after. Maybe we don't exactly know. On the console, and it's like, okay, well, whatever. That That's an argument whether or not you believe it. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's launching on the PC first. However, I think the one that is really more a bit befuddling here is the is what Microsoft and Xbox have done with Indiana Jones. Now, the rumors of this title coming to PlayStation have been around since, uh, actually it was even, I think, during the FTC or U EU trial, I can't remember which one. It came out like, hey, we're actually already building this for PlayStation, but we might cancel it after whatever acquisition or whatever. And so, yeah, at this event at Gamescom, they announced the shipping date for Xbox. And this is like the second massive blunder that I think Xbox made this week that turned the tides not in the direction maybe they wanted to go. Again, for a while, it has been presumed that this is going to be on Xbox. And that's what it is. And it's launching on PC. And at this point in, this, in, in life in general, everybody knows it's coming to PC. It makes a bunch of money. That is not all that surprising. What was befuddling is that they also announced that it's coming to PlayStation. Why? Like, what Xbox should have done is just left it at this. Hey, Indiana Jones, this the big budget title, this awesome title, this super fun title that a lot of people, and myself included, have been waiting for, is coming to Xbox and PC in December. And just left it at that. But they went the next step and said, hey, it's also coming to PlayStation in the spring. So if you have a PlayStation, guys, we don't want you to feel left out. So don't ever buy an Xbox or sign up for Game Pass because just wait until the spring. Like, it... <laughs> They, they shot themselves in the foot by doing this. They could have just left that slide out. Yes, it's still coming to PlayStation. And let me be super duper clear. I have no problem that it's going to PlayStation. I don't care if more people get to play Indiana Jones. That doesn't bother me. All that I care about is the plastic box sitting under my TV can play Indiana Jones because it's an Xbox. I get to play it. That is all that makes me happy. That's all that I need to know. They could have just left off the PlayStation part 
and just had a great holiday season and then January 15th be like, oh yeah, cool. We're going to launch this in the spring as well on PlayStation. So you guys can do it too. After they potentially sold more Xboxes, potentially after they got more people to sign up for Game Pass. But like if your motive, which Microsoft has told us to judge them on by how many people sign up for Game Pass is to get people to sign up for Game Pass. Don't announce the titles coming to the competing console platform before you've shipped it on your own. Because let's, let's get real nervous here, folks. Let's pretend that this title gets delayed. And then what happens? Like, does that gap shrink when it is launches on PlayStation? I don't know. I don't want this to become like a rant, even though it definitely went that route. But it's more of like, th they didn't need to announce that. <laughs> Just let Xbox fans have a moment. Just let people be super happy that this is coming to PC and Game Pass and Xbox and just leave this out. <laughs> just drop it. It doesn't. They gained nothing by this. The only thing they gained by announcing that it was coming to PlayStation is not selling more consoles and getting people to sign up for Game Pass. Like that is what they announced. And so this is where that second class citizenship really feels heavy because it's like, okay, we're not getting Towerborn. It's going to PC first. Okay, the big title, the big legendary Indiana Jones title. Well, you know what? I don't have a console. I Whatever. It's going to go on PC too. Uh, oh, yeah. It's also going on PlayStation as well. And it's like, uh, what's the point of owning an Xbox anymore? Which is a very fair and valid question anymore. Like legitimately, what is the point? Now, there are reasons to still buy an Xbox. First off, I will tell you right now, it doesn't matter what they sell, I will buy the next Xbox. As long as it sits under my TV, it runs Xbox OS, and I can sign in and buy and get Game Pass, I will buy the next console. I am not trying to sit here and say Xbox is doomed, doomed, doomed. They're definitely not. Xbox does have good stuff coming. First off, all these games are coming to Xbox. Like you can't, don't forget that. Like don't forget that all these titles will launch on Xbox. Like they are coming to Xbox. It's legitimately happening. Also, Game Pass is the best value in gaming. There is no question about that. Xbox, Game Pass, Ultimate, whatever. I, yeah, that's what I'm paying for. Is the best value and you can play all these games for one low fee and you cannot get this on any other console and i would i would be very surprised if xbox game pass ultimate ever launches on playstation that would be that would be the holy grail of catastrophes is that actually happening so maybe someday in past my lifetime it happens but if that happens in my lifetime it'll be very surprising also xbox has the best of breed I, I, xbox has the best of breed os i will die on the hill that they have the best integration with friends list uh groups inviting people across things chat like the whole thing works exceptionally well and i think xbox has best of breed there's some unsavory truths though here uh first off like when we think of gaming we think of like like starfield indiana jones these like niche titles and i'll call them niche because the most popular games on the planet right now are fortnite call of duty fifa slash football club madden roblox minecraft and maybe another one in there those games play exceptionally well on Xbox. So when you get all hung up that Indiana Jones is going on PlayStation, like I just did, you got to remember like what games people actually play in terms of like sheer numbers, Indiana Jones ain't it. And in five years from now, nobody's going to care about Indiana Jones. Now you could argue that Microsoft slash Xbox fumbled the bag with Black Myth uh, Wukong this week. But again, in five years, is anybody going to care? Probably not. Very few games can do what Destiny did. Very few, even fewer games can do what Fortnite and Call of Duty and FIFA and Madden have done. And so when it comes to like the games that most of the world plays, Xbox still does it exceptionally well. And when you bundle that with Xbox Game Pass, it becomes, again, I think the top tier platform. However, if you're looking for pure exclusives and just games that aren't, you know, those Fortnites of the world, yeah, PlayStation is a good place. However, I will absolutely tell you that if you're angry at Xbox right now, don't go buy a PlayStation because you're not a gamer. You're not the gamer that you think you want to be. Buy a PC. PC is becoming the central rock of the gaming ecosystem, hands down. PlayStation's putting games on there. Uh, everybody's putting games on there at this point. I, Nintendo's like the one odd hold, holdout, really, but it wouldn't surprise me. But right now, if you are uh, have an Xbox and like, I need to go, I need to get something, to, go buy, get a gaming PC, and you'll be exponentially happier because all these titles are coming there too. And then all the PlayStation titles are landing there as well. So yeah, PC is becoming the central rock, which really 
brings the question of like, where is Xbox headed at the end of the day? What is the next generation Xbox going to look like? Yeah, it'll have some probably an NPU, might be based on ARM and all that stuff. But maybe it's just a PC launcher. I don't know. Phil Spencer has already said that they're going to continue to build consoles. And I will tell you, I will buy the console. I like the thing that sits under my TV. I press the button, it turns on, and goes boop, boop. And then it just works, right? I'm not interested in buying a, a mini PC to sit under there and, and jump through all those hoops. However, it does make you wonder, like, if the next-gen console, and making this up, was an AMD Zen 6 CPU in, like, whatever, like a, a 9700 XT, whatever, two generations forward GPU, is that all that different than a PC? And it's just, you just have an Xbox launcher and then Steam is right there and Epic is right there. I don't know. I don't know. The point of this video is that Xbox fans feel like second-class citizens once again following an Xbox event. Because again, Towerborn's going to Steam. They didn't have to announce that this is going to PlayStation. So ah, I don't want to be an Xbox doomer because again, I pay for Xbox Game Pass. It is the best thing. I, I will continue to pay for it. I will continue to buy Xbox consoles. I will continue to buy Elite controllers even though they break on me and I need another one. That being said, you just, you want to see Xbox succeed. They just spent over 70, $80 billion in the past few years. And yet the people who are most loyal are the ones that are getting stepped on the most. So, I don't know, guys. As always, make sure to keep it subscribed here because on the BS on this channel is me.